Hold up now. Don't quit. Don't quit like men. Be strong. To Christ shall every nation fall. And we sing. Has won. The cross has won the Hallelujah. 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 afternoon hallelujah to see your glory hallelujah blessed be your name oh God open the eyes of my heart Lord open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you open the eyes Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. 
Just some notices. Please be seated for a moment or two. Glory to God. Just uh, one of our eldest friends that's passed away, gone home to glory these last few days, several days ago now, and that is John Mennell. And so we pray for Brenda, who's been her carer for many years as well, and brought her here so many times down these years. And so, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we just pray for Brenda in particular, and the family, John's family as well, for your glory as they pass through the valley. Lord, thank you. You can get out of the valley. And Lord, thank you that you'll go with us through the valley, and we'll come out the other side, because you are still the light of the world as you walk with us. For you are glory in Jesus' name. Amen. And we have no details yet at the moment concerning any details there are. This week's been quite a challenging week for me. Probably many people in here too. And um, as, we, as I journeyed from the beginning of the week... Um, I just thought, Lord, what's going on? What's happening? Help. Help. Um, but I saw a miracle this week. And it was in the dog. <laughs> um, she had a bad eye. So I took her to the vets on Tuesday. Oh, I took her to the vets last, Thursday, last Friday. Gave her drops in her eye. Then I took her back on Tuesday to see if there was any improvement. And there was absolutely no improvement whatsoever. The little dog, the Pomeranian, had an ulcer, deep-seated ulcer in her eye. And um, so they gave me the worst-case scenario. She may lose this eye. We'll put you, up, I'll put you, into, you know, in touch with a specialist vet that is an eye um, surgeon. One of the nearest places is Penrith. Oh, Penrith? No, I can't travel all that way. I've got too much on. Um, you know, so she really did give me worst case scenario, lose an eye. She's a pretty little thing, this dog, the Pomeranian. She gets lots of attention when we go everywhere. She's lots, she's, yeah, won quite a lot of shows with her little pretty face. And I just broke down in the surgery because it, for me, it was just one more thing <laughs> that was piling on for this week's things. And I just cried out to the Lord. I thought, we need a miracle here. So I drove back to Mum and Dad's to here, to Holly Bush, and we put this little dog on Dad's knee. We prayed. We overcame. <laughs> but I had something to do. 
I had four drops at all different times to put into this little dog's eye. Now that meant staying up all night. In fact, yeah, <laughs> I haven't had a good night's sleep yet, but it didn't matter. I said on the settee, every two hours, every three hours, I applied this little dog with ointment. The following day, and then she was back on Thursday, and we prayed for a miracle. It's a dog. She's a dog. What I'm saying is God is interested in your dogs and your cats. Your, whatever animals you have, he's interested in who you live with because they're yours and he cares about them. And if it distresses you, you know, it's, you know, God is interested. So I needed to see a miracle. We prayed, we prayed, Gabriella prayed, and we took to the vets. So Thursday, we're waiting for the ultimatum. And you can imagine, they take them away, and then they come back, and I'm thinking, what's her face going to look like, the vet? She said, there's a slight improvement. So I said, praise the Lord. I was talking to this girl next to me who brought a bulldog in to clip its toes or something like that, and I said, this is a miracle. This is a miracle. And, and I wasn't bothered who was there. <laughs> this was an out and out miracle. This is an out and out miracle. Then I took her back last night, and yes, you know, it's on the mend. And an ulcer in an eye, anyone that knows eyes, probably wouldn't recuperate at all, wouldn't recover because it was so far seated into her, her eye. But you know, I came home last night and I thought, thank you, Jesus. But mum gave me that night on Tuesday night. Um, when I was sat with mum and dad, my mum just passed me um, a little um, verse, and it was from um, Melvin Banks's. He sends out lots of things, Melvin Banks, and he's a miracle. He believes in miracles, does Melvin. Still believes in miracles. And it tested my faith, because, you know, you just, you believe and you believe and you believe, but it was Isaiah 41, verse 10, and it was from the Messenger Bible, don't panic. Come on. Don't panic. I am with you. There's no need to fear, for I am your God. Come on. I'll give you strength. I'll help you. I'll hold you steady. And keep a firm grip. A firm grip on you. I thought, a firm grip. I was hanging on yes. to Jesus. I was hanging on for Jesus, to Jesus, saying, Lord, help me. Help my family. Help this little dog. Let's see a miracle. We got the miracle. Come on. But I had to grip on. <laughs> I had to grip on. That was just one thing this week. But I had to grip on. So I gripped on. It's to hold tightly strongly seizing something holding on fear not King James Version fear not for I am with thee be not dismayed for I am thy God I will strengthen thee yet I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness mm. my life is in your hands I'm just going to show you the the YouTube, and I don't want to take over too much dad's time, but I felt this was right to, so you could listen to it. And listen, well, you can see the lyrics, because this song for me has so, been so apt. Joy comes in the morning. Yeah, come on. Yeah. Joy comes in the morning. When you don't feel like it's coming, <laughs> joy does come in the morning. Hang on. God's got a firm grip on you. Thanks, Rob.
believe that? Amen. Can you sing it? Amen. Do you know it's true? Amen. It's the way of the cross. By the way of the cross. Chaucer's book that you hope, I hope you've read, read in days gone by. Everybody has to go by the way of the cross and meet that man, the Saviour of the world, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah! Cheer up! I know I can make it. I can't, but I know I can. I've got a man that's taking me. So have you. And so that is our faith. Our faith in the Word of God, even today. As we have gathered together, sing these songs, that's a new one on me, it's a good one. Hallelujah. We may sing it at the end, I don't know yet, but I just want to say a few words from God's Word, because, hey, this Word has been going out a long time, and I have no need to change it, it's just as it is. Hallelujah. And I just want to read a few verses, that's all, to begin with, then just finalize a little bit, I won't be too long. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Better get to the right chapter, then I might do something good. Hallelujah. It's an old story. You've maybe heard it before. And it's out of the Gospel of Luke and chapter part of chapter 15. And we find there that we read about a man who had two sons. I'm starting down at verse 11. A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the young son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance in riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to his feeds to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that the swine did eat, and no man gave to him. And when he came to himself, he said, how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare? And to I perish here with hunger. I'll arise and I'll go to my dad and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. And he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to be merry. And now his eldest son was in the field. And he came, and drew nigh to the house. He heard music, and dancing. And he called one of the servants, and asked him what these things meant. And he said unto him, Your brother is come. And your father has killed the fatty calf because he received him safe and sound. And he was very angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him, saying, He answered and said unto his father, Lo, these many days I serve you, neither transgressed I at any time your commandments. And yet you never gave me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this thy son is come, which hath devoured thy living with harlots, thou hast killed for him the fatted calf. And he said to him, Son, 
Thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this your brother was dead, and is alive again, and he was lost, and is found. Hallelujah. You may have heard many stories about this, but I just felt that, as I was reading through it, that we need to remember again, friends, what God has done and has been doing right down the ages, and also what the Lord Jesus Christ has done when he's been sharing so many of these parables. As you read the parables, this is one of the parables. And, uh, you know, we need to be so thankful that uh, God works everything out in his time. And without going into too much detail, I just want to remind ourselves, remind myself, because that is happening to so many people, has done right down the ages, but it's just the same today. There have been, there are, and there will be, always will be, somebody that says, hey, can I have me, my inheritance before you die? What a strange thing to ask. But some people have, what shall I call it, without swearing, hallelujah. The, the fondness, the, the craziness of asking the dad, especially from the background of the land of those days, it was passed on. From, and it is amongst the Jewish people, it's still the same passing on that you get. But you've got to wait. You've got to wait. But this young man went to his dad and said, Dad, I'm going. I'm leaving you. I'm leaving you, my brother, as well, leaving the family. Uh, I'm going. And we read what happens when you and I and anybody steps out of the will of God. It can happen to anybody if we aren't careful. It does happen to so many people. They think that so many thousand pounds will take them so far. And it does. But so many people are found back in bad state. So many people don't return. So many people do things dangerous to themselves. And uh, they do what some people do. Because as young people, I'm not going to say what it is, but you know what it is. Some people get rid of themselves. You know, friends, there's a word here today that I'm saying, it's all to do with trust. We have been given God's word. And as an elder man today, here today, one of the elders, you know, friends, elder in Jesus, anyway, hallelujah. You know, there's so many good rules in God's Word. There are rules for us to obey. I'm not going to into them all today because there's so many. There's God's rules and there are man's rules. We've got to discern which are which. And we've got to fit in, as Christians in particular, but ordinary people, if they fit into God's Word, even if they don't know our Heavenly Father, even if they don't know Jesus, they will find they're on the right track. Because this is the right track. Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, to protect people from all the problems and difficulties that some people go through in this life. To guide us, protect us, to make sure, you know, we do the things that save us from getting killed. The laws of men. Keep on the left-hand side of the road. Unless you go to America, then you'd better go the other side. You know? But those laws that are made by men are just for our physical, natural protection. Here, to save us bending too much tin. Things like that. But these are the laws of God. Praise His holy name. And therefore, every part of our body for all of our lives, if we are willing to fit into them. And so, I'm using this young man as an illustration of this happening right under our noses to some people, right? Nearly every week, somewhere in this world of ours. I'm going to make it on my own. I'm going to have a good time. You know, friends, 
the way the enemy gives people good times uh, without mentioning any films that have seen the written up about them because I don't see them but I've seen some of those films friends and many people lose their own lives many people take their own lives I'm not going to mention anybody anybody's name if you've been reading the newspapers down these last few years and even nearly once a month there's somebody that decides they're going to end their lives well-known people I don't know what they've done but somehow the wages of sin is death and we sometimes think of physical death we don't think it that way we think oh well I'll get myself into trouble but I'll get myself back out but hey friends the same rules for keeping straight are the same rules for everybody in this world and the way we keep straight is not because we are strong the way we keep strong and keep living is the fact that we have a saviour we have a redeemer we also have a guide and comforter called the Holy Spirit are you with me I'm nearly finished I don't like being too long and people can't say that I say it's too long I just say enough so that it gets this going and this going as well because that's how I am hallelujah glory to God it's all about common sense but lots of people don't have common sense some people think they're a law unto themselves that's why the next thing that's going to be built has some more <laughs> up and down the land some more prisons to be built we ain't got enough prisons to all the people that are going in there they're all in there for some wrong reason or right reason they're all they've been in there in there because hey friends they have gone against the law it is a fearful thing God's Word says to fall into the hands of the Living God right am I right you know I would like an amen now and again that helps me that doesn't mean I'll speak to friend much longer but never mind hallelujah you know yeah it's all there people think they can do it on their own friends we can't do it on our own because we're not made like that we are made in the image of God and our Heavenly Father makes sure that he sets us off good by and large hallelujah most of us are living and born living some okay there's some wrong ones about them but uh, most of us have a fairly decent life a long life I'm talking about years now and oh friends I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God I'm so glad that those kind of hymns and songs were sung when I was being brought up I'm so thankful anybody else here so thankful for where we've been brought up and how we've been brought up and what we've learned and what we've heard hallelujah you know I'm not here because I may have said this before I'm here because of the prayers of so many of our family in days gone by I trust some of you are the same yes friends we have a heritage I've mentioned it before I'll remember it again, mention it again today is the fact this DNA that the found out God's allowed them to have a look in and find out all about DNA friends this DNA is going back a long way of people in our family in days gone by who were prayers they went to church they loved the Lord they served the Lord and they escaped out of Scotland I'll be pretty facetious on this because friend go go home and if you don't want to buy one go and get Fox's Book of Martyrs out of the library and look why and see why people who became Protestant instead of Catholic if they hadn't come out of Scotland they would have been beheaded hung drawn and quartered so when we see things one thing that really upset me I take a bit of upsetting but I was really upset friends do you remember that picture on the television of that airman that had been captured and they put him in a cage 
and put a fire underneath him. Do you remember that one? I, I had a shock with that. But friends, that happened up in Scotland. It happened in Scotland. Those kind of things. They were pretty ruthless. And so, friends, I'm so thankful. I'm so glad. I'm, I'm so glad that you are here today. Because we're family. We're part of the family of God. We've been redeemed by his precious blood. And so, hey, you say, I'm not saying much about the prodigal son. No, because we're somewhere along the way. All have sinned and shall come short of the glory of God. Right? We're frightened of the name of sinner. Yes, I was a sinner. I'm still a sinner on the outside, but on the inside I'm redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. He's worth it. He's worth it. He died upon the cross all those years ago. I'm just using this as an illustration today. If anybody wants the notes to hear, I'll give them for free. Hallelujah. But you know what I'm meaning? I'm not being facetious about that. But the eldest son, without going through all the rigmarole of what's there today, the eldest son comes along. And uh, what's going on here? What's up like? What's happening here to one of the servants? How well do you know? Your father's had his prayers answered. Your lad, your, your brother's come back. And what's he doing about it? What's all noise and fuss? Well, he's killed a calf and they're having, making merry. They're having fun. They're being thankful. Ah, well, that's a right going on. Look what he's done. Taking everything, come back penniless. Di da di da di da. You know, friends, let's not get too jealous of somebody that's a bit ahead of us. Let's never get jealous of somebody that has walked out. They need prayer. I'm talking about walking out the house, male or female. People are doing that today as well. Leaving the families, things like that. So these things are happening all the time. All I'm trying to say today, to say today is, friends, these things, not many have arrived here yet. We've had these several months of nobody being around. But, friends, I believe that there are people coming in through that door, through that gate, into this place, we need to be ready to meet some of these prodigal sons and daughters and not pull them apart and not give them a cold shoulder, but we need to be ready, full if we can get full of the love of God and we can tell each these new ones that maybe have never heard that they'll come in a mess. A lot of them, they'll have a mess, they'll bring a mess with them, like some people have done in days gone by. And we have an answer if people will fit in to these same words of this same book. Praise the name of the Lord. All I want to say is, are you ready to receive them? Male or female? In a big mess or a little mess? Got that much mess around them that don't know how to get out of it? Have you got an answer? Have you got the answer? Have you got the answer? We've had 16, mo 16 months to prepare. If you know this, you'll be able to point them to Jesus. I don't know it all. But I know the important piece is for somebody that doesn't even know a thing about Jesus. Just go to God's Word and tell Him about your Saviour, your Redeemer, so that you and I, hopefully, have not been in, in a position like this prodigal son. Or, I don't know how he feels and how he got on with it, but... 
An elder brother can be stiff-necked as well. Fancy his dad. Fancy me dad doing that. Look what he's done to me dad. Then his dad has to say to him, Hey lad, he's had his share of money. He took it with him. He's come back penniless. But hey, don't grumble. You've got all this left. This is all yours. This is all yours. It's not your brother's. This is yours. Enjoy it. Enjoy it. Don't get all... Yeah, well, in other words, the answer to that is love. Go to your brother. Don't say in there. I'm just filling it up to finish now. What had he to do? He had to forget about the past. He should have been so glad that he'd got all this to go at. They weren't his brothers. Everything that was left was his. To have the grace and the grit and sometimes the guts to go to his brother and say, I'm sorry, lad. I'm sorry what you've done, my brother. But, hey, I forgive you as well. And that's the bit that takes the doing. And there's only way we can do that is by being right with the Lord Jesus Christ. Being honest, being open, being willing to just say, sorry, I'm not glad for what you've done, You've done that, but hey, I forgive you. I forgive you. Come on, lad. At least you can come and help us to plough a few fields if you've got nowhere else to go. Come on, my brother. There's plenty to do. There's seed time. There's harvest. There's plenty to do on the farm still, if you would like that. And you'll get paid for it. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Mm, yeah. Hallelujah. Hey, thanks be to God. Just let's sing another song. I'm saying these things today, friends, just what's on my heart. I'm talking 2021. And I just want to say again today, I know things have happened in this place since we opened up again. I'm not going to mention any one of them today, except miracles have happened in this place, in some people's lives, and some people's hearts, and in some people's bodies, and in some people's spirits, since we opened up again. God is moving by His Spirit. He's moving by His Spirit. He just wants you and me. We all need to be in the same place. In humility. In humility. To say, Thank you, Lord. You've forgiven me. Lord, whoever crosses my path for whatever reason, whoever comes, Lord, help me to pass on the love that you have bestowed upon me to those who don't even know the way. Help me to show them the way. Take some doing. Take some doing. And I believe I need to challenge today again a challenge of, are you ready? To let somebody sit beside you, or go to them if you see them. Sit beside them and point them. Point them. Like 
I'll tell you one illustration. A man got put out of the house by his wife several years ago. He walked all the way here, 30, oh, 34 miles. He landed the next afternoon from when he, when he got kicked out. He stunk. Walked in. This takes some doing, but the Lord enabled me to do it. He burst into tears, dropped into my arms. The smell was worse. <laughs> so I said, okay, come on in. I said, come here. I'll find, we have some clothes there that Tune and Jackie put together, you know, all that time when we had the mission mark. We went in there first. I got him some clothes, took him in, got a towel, took him to get a shower. And came out, smelt clean. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm saying that to say, friends, it doesn't matter how you meet them, it's how you deal with them after you've met them. Anyway, glory to God. Cheer up. Jesus is alive and well. So we're going to sing. Let's go, shall we? And if any, I was going to just mention that because, friends, if you're willing to be willing to whoever comes to your attention, if you're willing to be willing to say, yes, I'll meet them at their level, Lord, help me to be willing to be willing. Just come and kneel here today and say, yes, Lord, I am willing to be willing to let you use me to point somebody else to Jesus or to bring somebody else back to Jesus, okay? Just as a private act of your own. Shall we stand? Come on, let's go. Come, Holy Spirit, fall on me now. Every day.
Spirit. 